For 236 years, we have called this quaint little city our capital. Nestled between a river, an ocean, and the greenery of plantations and marsh, it is a city known for its countless canals. Tree-lined avenues. And beautiful tropical gardens, giving it the name the Garden City of the Caribbean. Stretching from Turkine on the east coast to Agricola on the east bank of Damarara, it includes an approximate surface area of 50 square kilometers. The city, once referred to as the handsomest city in the West Indies, remains the political, economic, social and cultural heartbeat of the Guyanese people. But before this city was named Georgetown in 1812, and before its establishment in 1781, another capital existed. That capital we will find 32 kilometers down the Demerara River. The Netherlands had obtained independence from Spain in the late 1500s and by the early 1600s had emerged as a major commercial power. There are reports that in 1580, inhabitants of Zeeland, one of the provinces of Holland, had built a settlement near the Pomeroon River and then on the banks of the Esugrubo. In 1616, the Dutch established the first permanent European settlement in the area of Guyana, a trading post 25 kilometers upstream from the mouth of the Esequibo River. Other settlements followed, usually a few kilometers inland on the large rivers. The initial purpose of the Dutch settlements was trade with the indigenous peoples. This quickly changed as other European powers swallowed up territories in the Caribbean. The Dutch gained control over the region in the early 17th century, officially recognized by a treaty in 1648. The newly formed Dutch West India Company was given complete control over the trading post on the Esugrebo. They would go on to administer the colony for more than 170 years. The company went on to establish a second colony on the Burbis River in 1627. This settlement, named Burbese, was governed separately. Demerara was settled in 1741, and a decision was made to set up an administrative centre. This island was the location chosen and was named after P.J. van Burselen, one of the men from the management team of the Dutch West India Company. Major General Joe Singh in his writings, called the Wonderful Demerara River, notes that in the mid-1700s when the Dutch occupied Guyana, Esequibo was being crowded and the directors of the Zeeland Chamber of the Dutch West India Company allowed the commander of the Esequibo colony, Lawrence Storm van Gravesandy, to open up Demerara to sugar cultivation. It was when Gravesandi made a trip to Holland in 1950 that a decision was made to set up an administrative center in Demerara, and Gravesandi's son Samuel was appointed commander. Burselen was chosen to be the capital of Demerara. The island was laid out in 24 lots. Three were used for administrative purposes, and the other lots were sold off. Among the first grantees were Lawrence and two of his nephews. Today, the island is occupied by the Powers family, who do farming here. The Powers family history says that an excavator operator who once farmed the land handed it over to the patriarch of their family, but the circumstances of the occupation is unclear and it is not known how the ownership was passed down when the Dutch left. 
Those of the Powers family who now occupy the island showed us around. I can't recall the year, but we know we were here like about over 40 something years we're here. Okay, okay. Because I can remember when I was in primary school, once we missed the school bus that normally would carry us, my father would call us back in yeah. and we would have to come over here and pull grass from the Pop Choi banks, <laughs> pull grass and um, all the, the um, fruit trees, so pull out all the grass from between them. And we've been here planting for ever since. This is one of my brothers. This one is after me. Uh -huh. He and my small brother and the big one, they actually still live here and go to school from over here. How? Yeah. You take the boat and go over? Yeah, the boat used to be. Well, then not that far. <laughs> no, you go straight across. Then my mother, my mother and my father used to live here with them. Oh, they lived on the island? Yes, live. Okay. Yeah, hmm. they used to live here. Yeah. We had a house over there too, and they had one here. Okay. As I tell you, we always have houses because we always had enough workers here. Mm -hmm. And so that's basically how we occupy it from since then. Mm -hmm. And we been paying the lease and doing the necessary. Right. So we could go. But did, did he tell you any stories at all that he had heard about like when what? the Dutch we, used to be here or anything of that sort? Uh, we know that uh, way back on the, up that end of it, I had a big cocoa because I could remember on a big old train. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's not there because as you know, erosion, pee, the, it keep like mm -hmm. eating away, mm -hmm. eating away. And so I guess that but that a big cocoa like on that big tree down at that end. Okay. That end there. But now you wouldn't really readily see that. Yeah. You see some of the bricks, those red bricks is from the like the cocoa. Okay. Yeah, I gather up some was to make a little thing, but I <laughs> never get a monument with that. Yeah. yeah. So this is basically a young farm. Mm -hmm. We have citrus and coconut trees and Basically, we would come here weekends and hang out with our family, cook and eat, mm -hmm. and have a fun time. And I hear this is a very prized island that a lot of people are interested oh. in. Oh, and yes, and everybody always keep coming and ask to buy, and they want to come, and they want to see. Sometimes we bring them, just like oh, we bring you. Uh -huh. We would bring them, but sometimes we don't take we don't take the chance. <laughs> yeah. Because we always suffer the loss. We don't know who. Sometimes you catch, sometimes you don't catch them. Okay. Because last week somebody was here too, mm -hmm. with a big boat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but by the time we get here, they gone. Oh, so yes. Yeah. Yeah. My father, they, they, they carry the cows. Mm -hmm. They steal the cow and if we had, look, we got rope tying there, this last row we find in the, like at the end there, they would make this lasso and they chase the cow and the cow would hook and they gone with them. Yeah. So you're taking a big risk bringing us then? Oh, you know, right? <laughs> thank you, know, right? Thank you very much. I we were saying that you remember it has the gallows on the island? Yeah, he, yeah they would have... Um, Sydney, you could tell him about the gallows? Yeah, but I, I see it when I was more small, I can't remember. <laughs> what sort of stories did your father tell you about this island? Well, basically we know the Dutch used to be here, they used to fight where the... Um, it always had a conflict over this island and they always had war over this island with the different country. And if you read, if you go on Google, you will be able to read the history where they always are fighting over here mm. for this piece of land. <laughs> yeah. But um, other than that, we know too that the, the Dutch used to occupy, they used to make these Dutch bottle. It never used to make from a machine, they used to make it from a pipe and they used to use the hand and form the bottom. So when you see the Dutch bottle, at the bottom has a razor. That's where they would break off the pipe. They blow from the front mm -hmm. and they hold their hands and they form the bottom. Google and when we get so we, you're going to see it. And so when they break off the pipe, it has a razor. So you know that it's a Dutch okay. bottle and it's, it's, um, it's, a spot, it's special and it's... It's a real, a real Dutch it's bottle. Rare. It's rare, yeah, All because right. it got, got squat. They got like three different kinds. They have a big island like this. Uh -huh. Yeah, make... where they used to fight war from. Yeah. yeah. We have we have one ball. You're gonna see all little little that my sister yeah. would have gathered up there. How was the story about them hanging people on the island? Um, basically it was like all the people who want like you want a war and they um they they do something bad and so Capture this is this is the... yes whoever yeah they would hang them. Mm. Yeah. So basically, most people are afraid of here 
because they know and they know it at the gallows and they don't want to oh only the bad ones who would come to thief and so they ain't got time but the ones that know that the dutch were here and all the bad things that used to happen they are scared of coming but you've never been scared of the no seven. we never been scared yeah yeah we we we've been here for quite a while living normal good life <laughs> yes <laughs> we grew up we we come here from very small with our boat and do we think go back home then we build the big house was to come here permanent to live everybody was supposed to live here and go to school from here and everything from here the place was well planted we had pens like all along there with pigs plenty pigs and then the cow pasture was a little more in like mm -hmm. just beyond it because my father planted grass for that Okay. He used to go and buy the, um, what the grass name? Uh, Lockanto oh. grass. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's still there. It's very hard to get rid of. Mm -hmm. That's one of our biggest trouble right now. Get rid of it. By the time you weed it, this, this is always supposed to be though. You weed it, um, you plant it for the cows. They eat fast, it grow back fast, it grow back fast. So we have a trouble controlling that grass. But we still trying with it. We would burn, we would clean up because all they had it because it would spread fast too. Mm. So the pasture is still there, okay. but we don't have no cows on it and so now, due to the people carrying away them and so. From land, the family takes us on a boat tour around the island. So Ivan, how many times have you been around this island? Well, to be honest with you, I'm here since I was little. I love coming to the farm. So I find pleasure coming here. Almost every week I'm here. Oh two, three times a week, <laughs> all the time I'm coming. When with my father, uh -huh. I would come over. I was most the farmer girl. Just my structure and everything built for the farm. So I love the farming and I do well in farming. Whatever I put my hands to do, it comes. Yes, what produce. So you used to go to school from here as well? You, when you lived on the island? I did not. My, I go from Empor, okay. but I would come sometimes and be with them and I would go over. One and, once and far I would be over here with them in that time. Uh -huh. But most of the time I would be at home, we had a little shop, so we, me and my sister would be there most time and the boys would mostly come over and sometimes we would come to help pull grass and pick pop, try to come over back, car over back. Sometimes we want to get a message to my mother and father they, they, there was no phone at that time. So we would come right opposite where the, where the gas station is now. There was a big sand place there. And we would come and we would holler, Mommy! Daddy! And we echo our voice. And when we do that, they would hear us and they would come over for us. Really? Yes. So that was one way where we used to get to each other if anything happens somebody important come to them you know there were no phone at that time yes so, so this island means a lot to you yes it means a lot to me because i was there from small and um i maintained coming here yeah me and my two boys we would come there's a big boy there and they got a little one and my daughter we would come and we would farm okay. yeah what do you farm now coconut I'm into the coconut business. Uh -huh. I sell coconut, my mother sells coconut too. Okay. So, try to put in more coconut because my father planted a lot of coconut. We had a big disease that came, you know, this coconut disease? Uh, yeah. Yes, that killed out a lot of trees. Uh -huh. The so, palm mite? No, the red wing. Uh -huh. The red wing disease oh. killed out a lot of coconut trees on the farm. So right now we are trying to put in back some more. Yeah, let us see snakes and animals and Yes, so I kill a big kamudi the other day. I kill a long kamudi, long, like halfway this boat. I lash this kamudi, I lash this kamudi. By the time I don't lash this kamudi, I said this kamudi dead. When I go to drink some water and I came back, no kamudi. I said, wait, all these licks I put on this kamudi, is kamudi in there? Well, you got to dead now and I decide to beat in the head and I start to beat in the head, beat in the head, and I beat it till the head busts up, and I say, well, if you're dead, no, something wrong with me. And I hang it up. And as I work, I watch him, and he move, because I kill him. They will, those marker, those marker, 
destroying the coconut. The young ones, they're eating it out and they're cutting down the produce, the, 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 um, the amount that we used to get. So we really need to do something. I, I would like to um, apply for a firearm so I can <laughs> scare them off. You know, I wouldn't shoot them, you know, scare them off. Shoot one or two rounds up in the air to scare them off because coconut is a it's your business. business right now. And uh, we need to get stuff going because we're putting a lot of work some days. I work in the rain, in the sun. Water could be low. That little engine there, since my father was farming here, he gave me this engine when he died. Um, my mother gave me this engine when my father died. Um, and that's years, and I try to cherish it. Sometimes it just cut out, and we've got to pull gains tied with paddle. Uh, yeah, me and the boys, we'll pull the boat, try to get in the farm. Rain or sun, we come to see what we could do, because that is how we got a horn. When we were small, there was a sandbank here. Yes, we used to come and walk on the sandbank. Oh, really? And the water wash it, you know. So it was this tree all part of the island? Yes, this tree was a part of the island. And, the, and there's a channel. There's a channel right alongside the island here, which is a very deep spot. Yes, I could recall one Easter, Good Friday, we came here to picnic on the island. We walk and we walk. And I slip in the, the channel and I miss drunk. My brother, my brother slipping first in the channel. I stretch my hands to catch him. I slip in the channel. My mother run and jump overboard. Lujum. And she swim and she push my brother, push my brother till he reaches the dam. When he reaches the dam, I go to collect him, all his hands to pull him out. I slip in. He run. He come now and he, <laughs> he try to save me. He pull me out. My mother pull out my brother. So come we save. And then that was the last Good Friday we come and we went on the sand. So the island then would have been a little bit bigger than it yeah, is now? Yes, a little, a little bigger. But we keep trying to plant through the trees to try to save it. As for Yvonne, she has a hobby of collecting whatever relics she finds on the island. It's my little collection. Yes, I just... So tell me, tell me what you have here. This, first of all, this, this, this one is very popular. Yes. Oh. Well, these are the bricks that normally you find where the tombs and the whatever they make, I guess, is the tomb or a little bridge that they had. So as I find the little stuff, I would, first thing I say, okay, I'm going to take the brick, put it around. Then whatever I find, I would put it there. First, first of all, this spot here, when the tide used to come up a lot, I, my father put down this wood here and he throws stuff and build this spot higher than the other, spot, um, the other places. So that when the water wash up and spring tide come, it wouldn't soak up the mold. And so we can used to bring over bags and bags of mold mm -hmm. to like use on the pop choy and the cash crab that he used to plant. Mm -hmm. So this spot is high. When spring tide come, you stand up here like a, and you know, <laughs> water ain't coming up here. So I say, okay, this is the best spot to do this stuff. So whatever I find, I would put it here. This one day I was walking, we were, we were like... The singer? Oh, oh lover. yes, that is a, the cannonball. This is the ball that they used to fight the war with the war tank. We were walking on the... Yes, if you put it in the fire, it would go off, boom, because we had thrown one in a heap and it went off very hard. Yes, it would scare anybody away. So we were walking the mud flat. Normally when water very low, we would walk the mud flat for fun, you know? Mm. Enjoy yourself, you know? So we would see whatever little we see on the mud flat, we would pick it up. So this was one, we had like three other. Mm. One time we throw one in the fire to see what's going. You know what's going to You know when you're small, you want to, ex you know? Mm -hmm. So this is the cannibal. And for instance, I don't know what is this. I find this high, this, is, this iron got to be very exactly. old. I don't know how much years, if it's thousands of years. Of year. <laughs> this was way down in the mud, but I was digging a Dutch bottle a day. Mm. And this was along with about three Dutch bottles. I don't know, it's what? Mm. But I bring it up. Mm. Wherever I find, I bring it up. And this little 
this there, I, I was made to understand they used to put ink in there mm -hmm. and they used to use a feather and they used to wipe the feather when you pull up the feather, the ink, the ink uh -huh. you wipe off this the ink here so much wouldn't come and mess the paper up or the whatever they're writing on. Yes, and they would write with it. So this is an ink jar. I have some water in it. Yes. So, yes, and this is the, the jar there. What else I have? So that bottle, this one here. This one is a jar. Did you clean that up? Yes, I washed this out. When we it's were small, done, we had a lot of this. We used to make lamp. lamp. Mm -hmm. We used to call it well, these are touch. The, these are the famous Dutch bottles that everybody knows about. Okay. This one here. <clears throat> this this is, one here. This is an English least. Dutch. Yeah. Um, the English. This is an English jar. Uh -huh. It's not a Dutch. People call it a Dutch bottle. Oh, they call it. Mm -hmm. but this is just a joke. Um, yeah. That I mean, they got like plenty of that one, yeah. Yeah, this, this, these are English made. Uh -huh. These are English. How do you know? Made. Because the Dutch made bottle, these are English. These are English How made. How can you tell? Oh, the Dutch, we can tell by this here. I have, I have a few ohm, which is, I can sell, that I pick up. This is, for instance, this is how this bottle would normally look. Mm -hmm. So, here for you to this here, for you to know the real thing, there's a razor under here. Mm -hmm. You see, there's. This is what I was telling you about. Touch mm -hmm. it. How it make. Mm -hmm. So they were just. No, they put a pipe through here, yeah. and they would um, take the um, the hands and they would form it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? Careful. Remember, this is just a piece. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a collection. Right? <laughs> and they would form this, mm -hmm. and they would blow. And this is what give this the shape, and then they would break off the pipe. This, I would leave this. Mm -hmm. This razor on it. You see the mouth? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is called a squat. Okay. Yeah, they yeah. have different names. This is a squat. This is a, this is a flask. And that's a flask. But they have the English flask. This is an English one. The Dutch one would have the same razor underneath, underneath. here. Okay. And, and plus, I have a man. Not all. A stamp of a man. Yeah. Uh -huh. Different seed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, this is how you would know the Dutch from the English. Mm -hmm. Because after the Dutch leave here, English came, you remember? Yes. So, they were here too. Okay. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. most of these here are English. English. This is the Dutch. This is a Sydney. This is what? What is this here? Um, English or Dutch? English. But um, you feel how it's heavy? It's, some of them are um, pretty expensive here. Yeah. yeah, this one heavy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let me see if it's heavy. You got a good one. This is English. English? Yeah. So you, part, you found all of this on the yes, shore? Yes, on the, sh on the shore. shore, yeah. We'd call it. Well, we find this. I don't know where this came from. Or what it is. Whatever I find, I will bring it and make a collection of it. <laughs> it's here. Uh -huh. Is that right? I don't know. They got it right there. Eh? We'll get exactly. some sign on it. I don't know where is it about. Or oh, the um, the engravements. Mm -hmm. It was way down in the mud flood there. And these stuff, I don't know what they used to do with them. A lot of this I pick up. Moving on, she takes us to an area where she found some of the clay bricks. There's this structure we had here years, and the people take off everything off from it. Yes. Oh, you come, we just leave it. We just pull over the pollen. Yes. Pull over the pollen and call it that. We shelter there when rain come down. Mm -hmm. It's down here, have some. It have a tomb here. Here. The structure here. We get out a lot of bottles from here. Yeah, a lot of bottles will be showing and we pick them up. So. Do you think it's the tomb this part here? Yeah, this is the, the tomb. Here. Uh -huh. Right here. Yeah. yeah. That was 
could make cones and stuff. They strengthen now, you know, you could make, they pick them up. Mm -hmm. And you see how she makes that um, thing, you could still be still beautiful. Right. Yeah. yeah, so this is a tool. You have some edo here. Nice edo. I oh, like these edo here, you cook curry with it. Nice smooth edo. Plant up a lot of citrus by the place. With a lot of rain, the citrus and so on. Yeah. Those are some small citrus there. This is lemon. This is a lemon. Yeah. We have a lot of... I plant... This place is bring lovely pupa. I have pupa there. I picked like three days for yesterday. All these are citrus. We have a lot of coconut in there. We just need to weed it up. And as you go through, you have citrus. Citrus on this boat down here. Ah, oh, this is lemon. These are lemon. And there's lemon too. This is lemon here. And we have some cane over there on this dam. All in there, we have some young citrus. We need to weed them up. I plant a lot of small apple. We have to weed them up. This, down, this plum tree is here since we were small. This is here for years. We have this here. Yeah. It was only six years after Burselen was established as the capital of Demerara that it was agreed by the Dutch colonial administration that the island was unsuitable as the capital due to its small size and overcrowding. That decision was made in 1759, but it was only until 28 years later after the Dutch surrendered the colony to the British that Lieutenant Colonel Robert Kingston, the British Lieutenant Governor, erected a fort at the mouth of the Demerara River. This fort, called St. George, was built where the National Museum now stands. And this is where our journey now takes us. In 1781, the British established their capital here, Fort St. George on what is present day the site of the National Museum. Now a few years ago you would have been able to use the red bricks which made up the walls of the fort. They were used to circle and decorate the bases of the trees in the garden of the museum and before that encircled ponds. But years of landscaping and construction has withered the rocks and eventually buried the rest beneath rubble and topsoil. In 1782, the fort was seized by the French, who officially developed the area into a city and renamed it. Two years later, under Dutch control, the city was renamed again, this time Starbrook, after the president of the Dutch West India Company. The city was called Starbrook until the 29th of April 1812, when it was renamed Georgetown, in honor of King George III, and that's the name that remains today. The city remains an ever-changing, ever-growing hub for the Guyanese people. As our economy develops with future prospects of oil, Georgetown's growth is inevitable. 
There has been conversations in the past of relocating the capital, and there will be conversations of similar content in the near future as global warming threatens the infrastructure and thousands of lives of those who call Georgetown their home. But no matter where we go, we should never forget where it all began. Here, on what is today just a tiny bushy island in the Damarara River, Barcelona.